So this is our penile prosthesis model. And this was one of the first models that we developed through a consensus-based approach. What that means is we got a group of experts that came together and agreed on what are the key steps to train for this procedure and what components required to be placed in a model in order to achieve that level of training. And so what we ended up was we ended up with really creating a male genital system. And this is the penis with all three corpora. We had the pubic bone, we had the inguinal canal, the scrotum with both testicles, the vas on both ends, as well as several other components that you really can't see from the outside here. This is a truly unique model that enables you to do a skin-to-skin -skin penile prosthesis implant regardless of the type of prosthesis that you place inside. Interestingly, this is one that one of our trainees actually practiced on. And you can see the openings in the corpora, but if you look closely, you can also see the urethra showing, which actually means they performed, they got a urethral injury. So they are able to look at errors and understand why these errors got performed. Going into really starting to develop this model further, we are looking to develop this with previous fibrosis in the corpora for re-implants, but also looking at areas where which perforation occurred and having to place the extenders in order to place that implant. So ways to mitigate and troubleshoot during complex cases. So here you can see that we were able to create an actual corpora that enables a process to be inserted. You're able to actually feel it, but if you put too much of an aggressive of a dilatation, this will perforate, as you will see in the video. So here you can see in the simulation starts with the incision. The simulation is prepped and draped as usual. The skin and the retractor is placed and exposed as, again, usual during the procedure because in a true simulation, you want to emulate every single step of the procedure. Both corpora are exposed. You can feel the catheter in the urethra. You place your stay sutures, one on each end of the corpora. And then the next step is going to be the corporotomy. And this was very interesting during development of the model because they wanted some substance oozing out of the corpora when the incision is made, but they didn't want it to bleed. So we had to recreate something in the lab for that. And it creates a unique position where you know exactly where you are and that you're inside the corpora. Here is the dilatation being performed. As you can see, it's being performed in a very delicate manner, feeling the tip of the glands to know that it has reached its extent. And then here you're measuring the prosthesis that you're placing. We've even gone towards recreating an inguinal canal and the vas for you to be able to practice placing a reservoir. And every surgeon has their unique way of doing this. But again, we've created a very anatomical model. So as a result of that, any technique that you do to place a reservoir, whether it's ectopic or whether it's actually through the inguinal canal is something that you can pursue. This is the passage of the sutures to guide the inflatable penile processes that's being placed in this model. And then finally, placement of the cylinders inside the corpora. And if you look at the video, you can see that the surgeon here is performing this simulation very similar to how they would actually perform the real procedure. And that is our goal. They're now placing the scrotal pump. A lot of research was taken into really finding the adequate plane and the adequate tissue that would serve as that soft fiber fatty elastic tissue of the scrotum that you can actually place the pump in. Finally, trimming of the implant and tubing as normally you would do. This is a very, very important exercise and then closure of the skin at the end to make sure that the skin is closed adequately and you actually get to test the penile prosthesis at the end if it's an inflatable prosthesis. You can see here in the demonstration that after pumping up off the pump, the reservoir fills up the cylinders and it's a clear, successful implant. But what was more important than creating a realistic simulation is recreating the errors. Like perforation of the corpora of if excessive tension was placed during the dilatation process, as you can see here. This took a lot of R&D. We also placed iliac vessels inside the model 
to really recreate injury of the iliac vessels during ectopic placement after a radical prostatectomy, and of course, a urethral injury, as you saw in the model that we showed you, but also in the video there.